Oh no, <laughs> my tablet has just decided, which I have the teleprompter from, that it's time for an update. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Brain Blaze. I, as always, am your host, Simon. Welcome, welcome to the show. Well, I'm here, one of my writers, Dave, writes me a script, most ridiculous celebrity lawsuits. And I was like, Dave, with this one, make sure we're making fun of the celebrities, not celebrities suing regular people or making their lives miserable, because that's a lot less fun. So let's dive in. The culture of suing anybody and everybody who slightly displeases you is still alive and well throughout the Western world. Although very occasionally these lawsuits are justified, more often than not, they are no more than sin leave out attempts to gain money or publicity yeah people love this they're like <laughs> someone the other day was like i'm gonna sue you for this whistle you've upset me like this and i'm like okay mate i mean i don't reply and i'm just like great great so uh, i'll start paying attention when that happens because uh, it's not gonna happen is it because you're a nobody and uh well that's where it kind of you know if you were pfizer I'd be like, oh shit, okay, hello. <laughs> but you're not, are you? Who are you? I myself fell victims to threats of just such a ridiculous money-grabbing lawsuit during my time as a publican. One Saturday afternoon whilst I was working in the bar, a young lad, who I later found out was dressed in a suit, came in and asked to speak to the license holder. As that was me, I took him through the auto the office to offer him a seat and a beer before asking him what I could do to help. What followed was one of the most bizarre encounters I've had with anybody in my entire life. He told me that whilst visiting my establishment the night before during his 18th birthday celebrations, he and a couple of friends had attempted to take several lines of cocaine from the windowsill in the bathroom. This is a very bizarre situation. What is possibly happening? This being a problem that is faced by every pub in the entire world, we had long since taken to coating flat surfaces with a thin layer of WD-40. I had no idea. That's why it's so hard to do cocaine in the bathrooms. Wow. Huh, that's why I always travel with my little mirror. Wait a minute. For those of you who are not familiar with the properties of cocaine, it quickly becomes an unusable mess as soon as it comes into contact with even the smallest amounts of lubricants. And this is exactly what happened the previous night. The young lad in question, it transpired, had come in to tell me that if I did not reimburse him for his loss of cocaine, he, a newly qualified lawyer, would have no choice but to file charges against me. Surely this is a joke. <laughs> No lawyer would possibly do this. You'll just be like, well, what are they going to fire? You know, it's like, well, I, was, I lost my cocaine. You're not seeing the problem with this here, mate. What the fuck is this? I was still laughing five minutes later as I escorted him from the building. You may be interested to hear that two days later, I discovered that our 18-year-old newly qualified lawyer had chosen to make the very most out of his qualifications by working behind the counter at McDonald's. This is almost as if he was not a lawyer at all. <laughs> Yeah, well, it depends how the economy is, doesn't it? <laughs> Although I got an excellent story out of this experience and was never really in any legal danger, the time that I refused to serve Nigel Farage on the grounds that he's a massive racist could have ended a little differently. Did you really? Dave, if you actually refuse to serve Nigel Farage, who is an absolute bell in my opinion, um, that's actually incredible respect. <laughs> As they left, one of his security monkeys mumbled something about taking legal action, and although nobody working behind a bar has the legal right to refuse service to anybody for no reason at all, any legal action, which incidentally was never forthcoming, could have seen me financially destroyed in legal fees and other such problematic payments whether I won the case or not. Yes, and that's one of the reasons why the legal system is quite so fucked up. But uh, don't worry, no one's doing it. Like, you don't have to serve anyone dick. It's like, it's my business. Uh, it would be like if a sponsor came to me and be like, you can't refuse us. We, uh, like, like, um, what was that latest one with all the controversy? Established titles. Like, established titles came to me, and I was like, no, it seems like a bit of, I don't like this. And I don't know if I've talked about this, because <laughs> I think just because I do a lot of YouTube videos and I do a lot of sponsorships, people are like, Simon, did you see this thing about established titles? Uh, how do you feel about it, having worked with them? And I'm like, bro, I never worked with them. <laughs> I never worked with them. They sent me an email, and I found my email that I was talking to my ad guy with it. He was like, do you want to work with this company? And they're also, ah, oh, the companies were together. There was another one called like Yamasushi Knives or Yamagotchi, Tamagotchi? There, some Japanese sounding knife company. <laughs> And whenever a sponsor comes to me, and sorry, this is a little bit of a tangent. Whenever a sponsor comes to me, it's not very hard. All you do, 
as a YouTuber is you just type in the name of the company, establish titles, site colon reddit.com, and then you get a discussion of whether people think it's a scam or not. And it's very easy. And people like who were sponsored by all of these, they were like, well, I did my research and I looked into this and I looked into that. It's just fucking Google it and see if the people on Reddit, it takes like three seconds and then you'll know if it's dodgy or not. And even if it's not dodgy, you'll know if people think it's dodgy. And you still probably don't want to work with the company that people think is dodgy. It's not hard. I think people were just making a lot of excuses for uh, taking a nice bit of dough. Never worked with them. And look, I'm sure like um, there are companies that I've worked with. I'm not going to be perfect. There's going to be something on that I screw up at some point, certainly. But I didn't screw that one up. What are we talking about? <laughs> uh, the broken legal system refusing service. Yes, let's get back to it. Many months later. I've got to thinking about this the other day, and I wonder just how many people with money take out ridiculous lawsuits against people purely on the belief that because of their celebrity status and abundance of cash, they will end up victorious after their day in court, no matter how flimsy the case may be. In today's video, we're going to take, oh my God, we're still in the introduction. <laughs> and I know. Now, this one is mostly my fault because I went off on like a long tangent. That is water from yesterday. I'm not gonna drink that. Do you like my fancy glasses? I got myself some fancy glasses and I've been enjoying drinking out of them. <laughs> that water looks horrible. You know water after a while gets those bubbles in it. <laughs> What's up with that? In today's video, we'll take a look at such a few such ridiculous lawsuits that the celebrities behind them and whether or not they were successful. 50 Cent suing Taco Bell. Or as Americans call it, Taco Bell. <laughs> And every time, people are like, Simon, it's pronounced Taco. If I, in my British accent, started pronouncing Taco Bell or tacos for dinner, people would be like, you sound like a right twit. It'd be like if, as a British person, I started pronouncing it Nike or aluminum. It's a different language. It's the same language. It's a different thing. <laughs> Taco Bell. I went to Taco Bell. I was in uh, Barcelona for a week in January to get some nicer weather. And uh, I know I'd been to a Taco. I think I'd been to a Taco Bell in the States once, and it wasn't very good. And I went to a Taco Bell in Bath. It's so cheap. It's unbelievable how much food you could get for your money. <laughs> like we went in there, and we spent like maybe I don't know, twenty euros, thirty euros, something. Like that. That's a bag of food, like an incredible bag of food. And then some happy hour. Whereas like, you go to for five euros, you get three beers and some tacos. And I'm like, it's five euros. Doesn't that? How does that even cover the tax on the beers? <laughs> Oh my god, this episode's gonna be like an hour long. I'm not sure what's wrong with me today. I'm just a rant machine. Sorry, 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 sorry. That's eight sorries. Why, Simon? This planet is dying. The human race is killing it. During 2008, Mexican-themed restaurant Taco Bell, as part of their Why Pay More advertising campaign, humorously suggested that a hip-hop star and alleged whiny entitled dickhead 50 Cent should change his name to 79 or 89 or 99 cents in order to correspond with the under $1 items on their new menu. It might be good value, but it is not funny. <laughs> it's a lame joke. How do big companies come up with such lame jokes. Can't you just hire a young person? Go find someone on TikTok who's really popping off, who's not getting paid anything because it's TikTok, and just be like, yo, you're funny. Can you actually come up with funny shit? Because all the 40-year-old men in suits at generic PR agency are a bit shit. Isn't it? And, and you could pay that person on TikTok much less, I promise you, and they'll be very happy, rather than however many millions you're paying generic PR com uh, not PR, what's it called? Marketing company. Oh my god. They took my job! The company even went so far as to send out an official letter addressed to the rapper, whose real name is Curtis Jackson, imploring him to change his name. Unfortunately, a copy of this letter was never sent to Jackson, only to various news outlets, and the first time Jackson heard of the idea was when it was reported by said news outlets. Jackson was not best pleased that the fast food chain was attempting to use his image without paying for it, and immediately filed a lawsuit through the Manhattan court system. They're not using your image. Um, they're, they're just, they just wrote a letter to you. That would be like, you think that I'm using your image in this. Uh oh, is 50 Cent gonna sue me? <laughs> oh no, Mr. Cent. Sorry, Mr. Jackson, to use your property. He's gonna be like, you used my image in your video. Yes. <laughs> That's how things work. Part of the original documentation for this lawsuit reads as, reads as follows. Curtis Jackson accuses the Mexican star fast food chain of diluting the value of his good name and employing a guerrilla advertising campaign to fool consumers into thinking he had endorsed the chain. I once got a letter from a celebrity's lawyer. <laughs> 
<laughs> and it is so weird. Like, Mr. I won't name them. Um, blah, blah, blah. Thinks blah, blah, blah. Think it was just a cease and desist. And then, ah, uh, is in the wrong. So I was like, oh, shit, my bad. I'm really sorry. And they were very nice about it. And that was a pleasant encounter, actually. Um, so I don't know why I'm not going to name them. I'm just not going to name them anyway, because I don't, I don't want to. <laughs> Let's move on. Being unaware myself of 50 Cent actually had a good name. Allegedly. Allegedly. I used the Wayback Machine to take a look at hip-hop internet forums of the time, and the majority of his fans, or at least the majority of his fans who posted online about the story, were not happy. Many online posts labelled him as a sellout, an endorsement mule, my favourite in insult from the internet so far this year. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with being an endorsement mule. Now, let me tell you about today's sponsor. <laughs> And some even went so far as to say that he would never listen, they would never listen to his music again. If that's why you're not listening, just never listening to someone's music ever again. That's insane. Does that mean I can never, like, Kevin Spacey allegedly has done more bad stuff than file a lawsuit against Taco Bell. But, and also, oh, it's so hard. Like, an American Beauty takes on a whole darker fucking twist nowadays, doesn't it? But it's so good. <laughs> It's such a good, it's like one of my favorite movies and it still is. And I feel bad. <laughs> Although Jackson originally wanted $4 million to, in order to compensate him for being associated with the tasty snacks, the lawsuit would eventually be settled out of court and the only thing that was ever made official about the settlement was that both parties are satisfied. Not as satisfied as me after that 20 euros worth of Taco Bell. And by satisfied, I mean disgusted with myself. At least one person, Rob Poach, a spokesman for Taco Bell, did not appear to be entirely satisfied, saying that we made a good faith charitable offer to 50 Cent to change his name between 79.89 on 99 cents for one day by wrapping his order at a Taco Bell, and we would have been very pleased to make the $10,000 donation to a charity of his choice. I know, like, there's this whole thing called donation shaming. Where it's like, people are like, that's all you gave, you know? And you shouldn't say that. You should just be like, thank you for giving. But I, I have to say, $10,000 is not a lot of money for Taco Bell. How much, like, let's just say Taco Bell's worth a billion, right? So that's the equivalent of a $10 donation for someone worth a million, which is just, is not very much. And you're a giant company. Personally, and I know I will get hate for this in the comments because it's currently considered cool to dislike Taco Bell. No, oh, I didn't even know that. I would have thought the 50 cent would have, why is it cool to dislike Taco Bell? Don't, just, don't they just make really cheap foods so that people can get lots of calories for no money? I mean, but if you really want to do that, just go to the store and buy bananas or po potatoes contain an incredible amount of calories. And they're basically free. <laughs> like, I don't know, I went to the store the other day and I bought like a giant bag of potatoes and it must have been, it was like less than a dollar equivalent. And I was like, how is it? <laughs> okay, surely this, I don't get it. It's basic, and they make chips. I take them home, I put them in my air fryer with oil. And it's like, this is delicious. <laughs> it's like a million calories. Uh, I would have thought the 50 Cent would have jumped at the opportunity to be associated with something that doesn't suck, allegedly. Johnny Carson tries to sue Porta Potty Company. This next story proves that suing someone because you yourself have a sense of humor failure is by no means a new phenomenon. Dubbed the king of late night television, comedian Johnny Carson became a household television name uh, with his success in hosting the US game Who Do You Trust? You know, I'm sure Johnny Carson is mega famous in America and all of that. I have no idea. I've heard his name. I couldn't tell you what he looks like, what he sounds like, what he hosted, other than it being a late night show and something called Who Do You Trust? But it's, it just never crossed the pond. Like, there's, I think I've mentioned it before, Jules Holland, mega famous in the UK. Probably no one in America has heard of Jules Holland. It's one of those weird, just some, some people just don't cross the pond. Comedians often, comedians often. But I don't know, I love American humor. Like, I listen to a lot of comedians on like podcasts and stuff. They tend to be Americans for some reason. Anyway, following this success, he would go on to host The Tonight Show between the years of 1962 and 1992. Although publicly a very shy individual, his TV persona and several alter egos portrayed very little, if any, of this shyness, and his self-deprecating, quick-witted comedic performances entertained TV audiences for several decades. On top of that, as far as I've been able to ascertain, he is also a member of an exceptionally elite club comprised of individuals with long television careers who have not been accused of any kind of sexual impropriety. Ah! Now it's like if you haven't been, you're in the you're in the club. You're in. <laughs> and as I was like, can I join the club? It's like, no, mate. No, have you not seen your history? Jesus, look at your own Wikipedia page. There's a whole section dedicated to sexual controversies. 
Although as close to perfect as it is possible for a TV presenter to be, even Johnny was not entirely immune to the allure of the courts, and in 1976 he attempted to sue a company called Here's Johnny Portable Toilets for attempting to benefit from his well-known Tonight Show introduction. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Johnny! Uh, I guess I just don't know it. <laughs> I'm sure everyone's like, ah, I see, and I'm just like... The company billed the device as the world's foremost commodian. Oh my god, again, can't you just hire that person from TikTok rather than like the team of 40 age, 40 year old middle aged dudes at like generic marketing agency? Commodian? Bro, that's the best you could come up with? Christ. Claimed that although they were aware of Johnny's famous tagline, they did not believe that the use of it constituted an endorsement and therefore did not require permission or payment. I remember I made a video once. And you know that thing that, um, I don't know how I can say this. Sometimes words, you know, need use, but need need for talk talk. I'll just say it without the any of the inflection. There's a dude who uses the words, let's get ready to rumble, and he says it in a very specific way. You know what I'm talking about. It's like really long and drawn out, and everyone knows this. And I used this in a video, being like, I can't even remember why it came up. It was in the script or something like that. And I said it like he says it, because of course you would. And people were like, bro, this dude is mad litigious. And so I, had to, I was like, okay. So I, and like, I, was, I looked into it and it's like, yeah, he will sue anyone who says it or uses it allegedly. Not anyone, you know, just in my opinions, what I read online, other people's opinions. Apparently this dude's mega litigious. So woo, eggshells. And so I took the video down and sliced it out and put it back up because I'm like, I don't want to get into trouble with that dude. But um, why are we talking about this? Yeah, oh, I don't even remember. Who cares? Let's just move on. Initially, the courts appeared to agree with this documentation. The original proceeding states that on the unfair competition claim, the court concluded that the appellants had failed to satisfy the likelihood of confusion test. <laughs> Tell you what, I'm likelihood confused right now. On the right of privacy and the right of publicity theories, the court held that these rights extend only to a name or likeness, and here's Johnny did not qualify. Wait, isn't that what he says in, like, uh, um, the movie in the hotel, Stephen King, The Shining? Whilst it has been a long time since I've studied any kind of law, my interpretation of this is that just because your show opens with two words, you do not own the exclusive rights to their usage. Unfortunately for the company, Carlson would successfully appeal this ruling, and they were forced to pay $31,661.96 in fines and fees. <laughs> Very specific. I can only assume that Carson never watched The Shining, or he would have doubtless pursued Stanley Kubrick or Stephen King for attempting to profit from his name. Lindsay Lohan tries to sue E-Trades for Super Bowl advert. Startling startling starting her modeling career at the age of three jesus that is kind of startling becoming a regular on the tv show another world and then going on to appear in disney's the parent trap oh i've seen that i've seen the new one with her and her sister or was it just her twice <laughs> does lindsay lohan have a sister is it the lohan twins there's some twins right it's not lohan twins is it is it lohan twins or did they just make her play herself twice like in that facebook thing I was so convinced that in the Facebook thing, those dudes, um, uh, played by the dude. Oh my God, Simon, your small brain. You know what I mean. Everyone knows what I mean. The social network with the. T I thought they were two, two, two twin actors, but no, they faked it. It's amazing. It would be fair to say that Lindsay Lohan had built quite a successful career for herself. However, as is sadly so often the case with young stars, fame and fortune would not be particularly kind to Lohan, and by 2010 she had found other ways of remaining in the public eye. That year would see her involved in multiple court cases, spending time both in prison and under house arrest, and filing a particularly bizarre lawsuit against the company E-Trades. So what happens? Well, it all started when E-Trades aired an advert during the Super Bowl. During the advert, one in a series in which babies played the stock market, a baby boy can be seen apologizing to his presumed girlfriend over a video chat for not speaking with her the previous night. This is very strange. He goes on to say that he had spent the entire night trading stocks online. For whatever reason, his girlfriend does not appear to believe this excuse and asks him, and that milkaholic Lindsay wasn't over. Lindsay? Milk a what? <laughs> again, again, did, did comedy just get better or 
were adverts in the past truly this cringe? It's just so cringe, isn't it? And I get that, you know, I know I'm slightly cringe, but I'm less cringe than this. The boy acts confused for a moment, but the whole effect is ruined when the baby girl sticks her head into the frame and sells Milgo what? As advert campaigns go, it's not exactly solid gold, but it does get the point across. And this was a Super Bowl advert? That should be solid gold. It really, really should. It's the Super Bowl. It's very expensive. Thinking that the advert was making fun of her widely publicized alcohol issues and apparently believing that any piece of media that contained the name Lindsay must be about her, Lerne attempted to sue the company for a hundred million. Yeah, good luck with that, Linzo. So, uh, lawyer Stephanie Ovadia released a statement in which she claimed that Lindsay Lohan had the same level of first name recognition as Oprah or Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> Please, in my opinion. Many celebrities quote, many celebrities are known by one name only, and E-Trade is using that knowledge to profit. They use the name Lindsay. They're using her name as a parody of her life. Why didn't they use the name Susan? This is very, 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 very flimsy. A spokesman for Grey Group, the company that produced the ad, denied any deliberate reference to the troubled celebrity, saying Grey Group sounds like a like a uh what companies like Blackwater called? <laughs> Mercenaries. Great group. Taking care of your needs abroad. <laughs> that sort of thing. <laughs> the best offense is a good offense. Grey group. <laughs> We used a popular baby name. That happened to be the name of someone on the account team. Lowen's legal representatives were not having any of that and continued to push for a $100 million settlement. <laughs> so much money it's not gonna happen <laughs> due to the fact that the advert had been seen by millions of years around the world they calculated that Loan was owed 50 million dollars in reparations for money made with the use of her name and a further 50 million dollars to compensate for the distress and anguish that she suffered as a direct result of the additional negative publicity that came her way because people were associating her with a milkaholic baby yeah 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 that's why people were associating you with negative alcohol images Lindsay that's why the milkaholic baby that's why that's why <laughs> Now, I'm not doubting for a moment that Lohan did indeed suffer distress and anguish. Okay, maybe just for a moment. Okay, it's now out of my system. However, both her and her legal team seem to have gone to Herculean efforts to push past this anguish and keep the story at the forefront of public consciousness for as long as possible. Sadly, perhaps due to the negative publicity that they themselves were receiving from the case, E-Trades elected not to go to court and instead settled with Logan for an, Lohan for an undisclosed amount. Ah, oh, it was not a million, but I bet it was millions. Ah, oh, no. No, you should have gone to court. This would have been great. Ah, oh, Chris, where it's due in recent years, Lohan appears to have completely turned her life around, even appearing in her own Super Bowl ad, during which she appears to make fun of her younger self. I like that you included that, Dave, because I think it's fantastic. People do, like, change, and they turn their lives around. I think that's awesome. Respect. <laughs> and also, you got that money, Lindsay. You got that E-Trades money. Shit. <laughs> Attorney Eleanor Capagrosso sues everybody repeatedly. Although she did not start out as a celebrity, she certainly became one, at least within the American judicial system. Capagrosso had become so notorious for filing frivolous lawsuits that two separate judges have recused themselves from hearing any more of her cases. Described by the New York Post as the Big Apple's most litigious person, Capagrosso attempted to sue everybody from her landlord to an employee at a day spa. As if this behavior did not exacerbate the already well-established stereotype of Americans suing everybody, Capagrosso has been known to take it a step further. During a hospital stay while undergoing foot surgery, she became enraged at the fact that the on-call doctor did not get to her as quickly as she wanted. As a result of this, she attempted to sue the hospital, also claiming that during her stay, a nurse had spilled hot coffee on her foot. They burned me, she told a reporter. It was beyond words. Wait, let me, let me re-say that. It was beyond words. <laughs> uh, that was, uh, um, she's probably going to sue me for that. <laughs> Allegedly. Oh, God. In a stunning turn of events, a superhero is being sued. When lawyer Tina Kansas, whom Kappa Grosso had employed to take on the case for her, failed to get the result that she wanted, she turned against her own te defense team and filed a negligence case against Kansas, blaming her for the loss. Fortunately for Kansas, this case was dismissed on statute of limitation grounds. Among the 16 lawsuits that she is alleged to have filed between the years 2002 and 2008 are... That doesn't sound like that many lawsuits, <laughs> to be honest. Negligence case against a dentist who claims she got everything wrong. A case against a landlord who she claimed failed to provide adequate heating and cleaning service. A case against a day spa for which she claims not to be able to remember the reason. And two separate cases against state judges in which she claimed, oh no, <laughs> my tablet has just decided, which I have the teleprompter on, that it's time for an update. 
No, 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 not now! And two separate cases against state judges in which she claimed a judicial conspiracy against her. In 2007, Justice Deborah James banned her from filing any more lawsuits without first obtaining pre approval from a judge. <laughs> You've been a very naughty boy. <laughs> As you may be surprised to hear, Capagrosso launched an appeal against this decision, stating that it was not within the rights of the court to restrict her access to the judicial system. When the original decision was upheld, Capagrosso was left with no further choice but to file yet another claim, this time to the Court of Appeal, who upheld the original ruling. According to an article in the New York Post, she claims that, quote, since then her case files mysteriously go missing, judges collude against her, and her cases are constantly dismissed. I shall leave it up to you, the viewers, to decide whether or not she is a legitimate campaign of a justice who is thwarted at every turn by a corrupt system. That's what I believe! 100%! <laughs> it's all rigged! Or just a massive pain in the ass. Kylie Jenner versus Kylie Minogue for use of the name Kylie. <laughs> Stupidest one in the title so far. Jesus. For the last entry in today's video, we'll take a look at what happened when reality TV personality Kylie Jenner went up against the world famous actress, singer, and breast cancer advocate, ad activist Kylie Minogue in an attempt to trademark their shared first name. First, a bit of backstory. I mean, uh, I'm including this mostly for Simon benefit, because, because, but I suppose that it's just possible there are a few viewers who, due to some incredible run of good fortune, are not entirely familiar with both people who feature in this story. I feel like Kylie Minogue is a singer, right? Does she sing that song? I don't know what it sounds like it's very poppy and bad kylie minogue raised rose to fame during the 1980s when she appeared on the hit australian tv soap neighbors my sister loved neighbors she'd watch i'd always get home from school and they'd be watching neighbors i mean i don't know soaps never really appealed to me i'm like why am I just watching other people's boring lives? <laughs> I have my own boring life, come on. She would go on to become a world-renowned singer, songwriter, occasional actor, and tireless campaigner for breast cancer awareness. Kylie Jenner rose to fame during the mid- So far, I'm on Kylie, Kylie Minogue's side, because, I don't know, isn't Kylie Jenner in that Kardashian clan? Aren't they kind of just, I don't know. I guess they'd also do charity shit, but it seems like Kylie Minogue, that's a big part of her identity, whereas Kylie Jenner, I don't think that's a big part of her identity. Rose to fame, and I'm not saying that you have to be like associated with charity to. Oh, whatever. Let's just move on. Rose to fame during the mid 2000s when she appeared in the hit TV show Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Dave put that in like hit. Like you might not like it. You might think it's a bit. Sh you might never have seen it like me. But it is unquestionably a hit show. At nine years old, she became an almost instant hit with members of the public and would later go on to release her own cosmetics line, become one of the world's most influential Instagram users, and obtain the title of world's youngest self-made billionaire at the age of just 21. Wasn't that hugely controversial? Because Forbes were like, she's a billionaire or something. And then it turns out that maybe she wasn't. Without wanting to take anything away from this achievement or come across as jealous, I imagine that it is perhaps slightly easy to become a self-made billionaire when you already come from an exceptionally wealthy family with almost unmatched public and media notoriety. Well, you don't have to come across as jealous to, to be like, well, to say something that's obviously true. So, how did these two exceptionally famous individuals end up in a legal battle over the use of a name? Well, it all started in 2015 when Kylie Jenner filed papers with the US Trademark Office to trademark the name Kylie for advertising and endorsement purposes. This is not entirely unexpected behavior as she had recently launched her own company, Kylie Cosmetics, and obviously hoped to prevent anybody else from using that name. Just over a year later, an Australian legal firm who represents- Oh, Kylie Minogue's Australian. Oh, she was in Neighbours. That's Australian. I knew this. Filed a notice of opposition in which they stated that Kylie Minogue had been using the name Kylie to promote her own brands for over two decades and saying there's a very real possibility that consumer confusion could result from the application if it were granted. Do these countries play nice like with trademarks and stuff or do they just have their own regions and stuff? I don't know how that works. The filing described their client as an internationally renowned performing artist, humanitarian, breast cancer activist known worldwide simply as Kylie and Jenner as a secondary reality television person. Savage, whose photographic exhibitionism and controversial posts on social media have drawn criticism, presumably criticism that they didn't want in any way to be associated with Minogue. The suit was eventually settled out of court, with neither star appearing to show any direct animosity towards the other. For example, Minogue referred to the disagreement in an interview with Hello Magazine as just business that needed to be done. <laughs> 
She's like, you know what now? I wasn't even aware. Because it's like three law firms deep in her like publicity company or whatever. And Jenna seemed to be happy to slightly adapt her product naming system. But the thing that seemed to be ridiculous about this lawsuit, at least to me, is that nobody from Jenna's marketing team or legal team seemed to think that they would even have a problem securing the trademark. Minogue had already fully established the Kylie brands when Jenna was still in nappies. This really does seem like a fantastic example of one celebrity's advertising and public relations company getting swept away by the fame of their own clients. Yeah, and this is fine. I don't blame them for it. Everyone lives in their own little bubble of what they think is important. Like, I'm on YouTube and I'll be like watching YouTube stuff that I watch. And then I'll be like, this person's like the biggest YouTuber ever. And the other day I was having a conversation with someone and I'm like, yeah, like Mr. Beast. And they're like, who? And I'm like, wait, you watch YouTube, right? And he's like, yeah, I love YouTube. No, you've never heard of Mr. Beast? Because everyone lives in their own bubbles. They don't know about other shits. It's crazy not to know Mr. Beast. It's true. <laughs> Thanks for watching. And so this is delicious.